Hi, my name is Jason Nikoff, and I'm an associate professor at Tennessee State University in agronomy and soil science. I want to welcome you to episode three of our Soil Smart series. We're going to be talking about soil pH and the important role that it plays in crop production. So to start off with, um, just very basically, um, soil pH is essentially the measurement of the level of hydrogen ions that are present in the soil. And so you can see from this basic uh, graphic that when we, when we add hydrogen to the system, our acidity is going to increase and our soil pH is going to decrease. And so that's a direct result of the number of hydrogen ions that are present in the system. So when we're talking about a more complex situation like in the soil, we've got two main components. We've got our soluble acidity, which you can see on the left-hand side, and then we've got our acidity that's bound to the soil itself, which you can see on the right-hand side. Now, when the acidity is bound to the soil, a lot of times it's going to be bound to clay particles. So clay particles have a net negative charge, and because of that, they're able to attract the positive hydrogen ions. And so in a, you know, in a normal situation, if we have some sort of a, a rain or leaching event, that acidity that's present in the soluble portion on the left is going to be removed or leached from the soil. And so when that acidity is removed from that soluble portion, the hydrogen ions that are bound to the clay particle can then migrate from that clay particle into the soluble portion. And so you can see the acidity that's bound to the soil can help to replenish the soluble acidity. And this is important because a lot of times when we send out soils, uh, soil samples for pH analysis, the lab's going to first do uh, a test just to look at the soluble acidity. And if the pH comes back and it's low, then they'll do an additional test to determine the entire acidity. And a lot of times this is called a, a buffer pH uh, analysis or something similar to that. And in that case, they're looking at both the soluble and the acidity that's tied to the clay particles or other particles that are in the soil. And so this allows them to give recommendations of the amount of lime that should be applied to take care of, of both of these portions. If we just did recommendations of the soluble acidity, of course, you know, we're not going to be happy with the results because there's going to be that residual acidity on the clay particles that, that's still going to be there. And so by looking at both forms of acidity, we can make better recommendations for, for those lime applications. In a more realistic situation, we generally have more cations than just hydrogen in the soil. And a lot of times, these cations are called base cations. Essentially, base cations are any sort of cations that are present other than acidic ones like hydrogen. And so these base cations perform an important role because they help to buffer the soil. They help to prevent too much hydrogen from being bound within the soil. So for instance, if there's a lot of calcium that's, that's present in the soil, it can help to remove some of the hydrogen that's bound to the soil. And that hydrogen will end up in the more soluble portions, which allows it to be more readily leached under any kind of a precipitation event that we might have. Now, when we're talking about soil pH, of course, we want to try to maintain a good balance of these base cations. We can lose base cations from uh, three, different, three different methods. One is through erosion and runoff, where uh, we lose that, that base cation either as part of the soil that's lost or in the soluble portion. It can also be lost through crop removal, so a number of these base cations are important nutrients for the plant, and they're going to be incorporated into the plant tissue, and come harvest time, 
uh, we're going to take a lot of that plant material off of the field and so it's not going to be replaced back to the soil. And the last one is through leaching. So of course the base cation can be removed further down within the soil profile or it can be entirely removed if it enters uh, the groundwater and then um, is, is mobilized into other natural water systems. Now another thing to keep in mind that's important when we're talking about soil pH is the effect that fertilizers can have. So specifically the ammonium fertilizers, um, things that, that have an ammonium component or things like urea, they can actually produce acidity within the soil. And so there, when those fertilizers are applied, there are certain microbes in the soil that can uh, convert the ammonium into nitrate and then we end up with additional acidity. You can see that extra hydrogen on the right hand side that's indicating that we've produced additional acidity that's going to end up in the soil. And so if somebody has a soil that is pretty acidic, um, they might want to identify a, a nitrogen fertilizer that is not going to have this property so something that has more nitrate in it is going to be more beneficial um, at preventing the, uh, the the decrease in pH that you would otherwise see with something like ammonium. So why do we care about pH? The, the main reason is because it has a direct effect on the nutrient availability within the soil. You can see from this graph a lot of the nutrients um, are going to be less available as the pH decreases, so as the acidity increases. And so important ones like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, as well as other macro and micronutrients are going to be less available. Now on the other hand, um, another element that's not on this graph is aluminum. And what happens with aluminum is the opposite effect. It actually becomes more available at lower pH values and that creates a, an adverse effect on soils and, and plants. So what happens with the aluminum, if there's extra aluminum or aluminum is more available in the soil, it's going to harm the plant roots, it's going to cause them to face uh, reduced root growth and you're going to have more stunting of the roots and that's of course going to reduce the uh, ability of that plant to access water and nutrients that it needs. So an example of this, um, the two soils on the right hand side are relatively low pH. Uh, the one on the left is more neutral and you can see there's definitely a, a difference in the root length and the root growth of those plants and it's a like I said it's directly related to the aluminum toxicity um, because there's always going to be aluminum present in the soil most of the time it's tied up unless we have those um, lower pH conditions. So that basically wraps things up related to, to soil pH and some general concerns and considerations to have when um, working with the soil and um, the importance of pH when engaging in, in crop production. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. My, my email and my Twitter handle are, are available, and I look forward to the next episode. Thank you.